Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video we're going to put our focus on how do we improve our performance for the individual written argument and performance task 2, particularly focusing on row 2 of the rubric where the students are required to establish the context of their research. In this video we're going to talk about some of the more common mistakes students make. We're going to talk about some simple suggestions to improve your work and then I'm also going to walk you through an activity that will help you to improve your own work. So as we go through this video thinking about row two of the rubric for the individual written argument the first thing that we need to be aware of is this is a binary choice row meaning that the AP reader only has two options here either no points which is uh, indicated by the response either provides no context or, and this is far more common, the response makes simplistic references to or general statements about the context of the research question. Uh, in order to earn the five points on this row, the response explains the significance or importance of the research question by situating it within a larger context. Now, one of the things we need to be aware of, much like on row one of the rubric, whenever the AP readers are faced with a binary choice, they can only give the points for a high level of performance. Low or medium will keep you trapped in the no points category. That's the way the rubric is set up. So we need to make some choices in our work that allow us to clearly communicate the significance or importance of our research question by clearly situating it in a larger context so that the AP reader can give us these points. So how do we go about doing that and making sure that we're doing it to a significant degree so the AP reader can give us the points? Well first we want to talk about our scope and a lot of times scope um, uh, can clearly be identified by a population or a location. Let's think about all the ways in which we categorize humans, whether it's race, age, gender, sexual orientation, political orientation, religious affiliation, uh, fandoms, whether it's uh, the, ac the athletics that you are into or the television genres that you enjoy. Uh, we need to think about the ways in which we classify people. So if we just say sports fans, that might be entirely too broad. But if we say uh, soccer fans for a particular team, that helps us to narrow down the scope. So let's take a look at a low performing example. And what we'll see here is the student made some choices that clearly communicate that they're attempting to communicate about lenses or disciplines. And so looking at this low performing example, through exploring the historical, scientific, social, and futuristic perspectives, I will investigate the necessity of activism in improving the happiness of citizens in both the past and the present. This is entirely too broad. How are we supposed to cover all of this information in only 2,000 words, which is our limit for the individual written argument? This version would require the student to look at everything that's happened in the past and in the present as it relates to activism on all issues for all groups of people everywhere on the planet. It's entirely too broad. So how do we take something like this where a student clearly has an interest in a need for activism, I'm assuming political activism, but maybe social activism, um, how do we help them make some choices? Well, one of the ways you might do it is instead of talking about all people everywhere, let's start making some choices and identifying how the group that you are talking about is most directly impacted by that. Now, in this example, we see a uh, social group, like the broader we are, the less likely we are to earn the point. So if my social group is just women or people who identify as women, that's entirely too broad. Now I could bring that in just a little bit and say women or people who identify as women between ages 18 to 22 years old, but now I'm still talking about everybody that fits in that category everywhere on the planet, on every issue, 
it's entirely too broad. I need to start making some narrower choices. Now I could take a look at race or ethnicity and then I could identify even closer with some very specific social identifiers such as first generation college students and then a shared characteristic of English language learners. By making those very narrow and specific choices I have clearly outlined the boundaries of my research. I'm going to be looking at activism as it relates to women or people who identify as women between the ages of 18 and 22 years old who are first generation college students happen to be Latino and are also English language learners. This is a very specific set of choices and now the AP reader will know exactly what my research is about and it's narrowly defined. This is done to a significant degree which would allow that AP reader to give me the points on row two. Now let's take a look um, as we go about doing this. Yes, we can do it by social identifiers, gender identifiers, the type of people, but we can also be doing this based on location. Once again, I see a very common problem at the AP reading where students are talking about very large regions, particularly North America, which is uh, an enormous amount of land and cultural differences. So I can start to bring it down a little bit. Maybe if I pick a specific nation such as Canada, but also Canada is a very diverse nation and a very large population so that might be too broad. One of the best examples I ever saw at the AP reading was when a student brought it all together and talked about um, the not only the province of British Columbia and the city of Vancouver but also narrowed it down to Chinatown. They were talking about the impact or negative impact of gentrification in that particular neighborhood by making narrow specific choices about the location. It made it very clear uh, what the student would be addressing and the scope was not only proper but done to a significantly high degree which allowed for the score to go up. We can also find that we can uh, narrow these choices down by looking at what we are focusing on. Uh, in the original example we were talking about activism but what form of activism or more particularly which individual policy are we trying to change? So we might be looking at a specific type of intervention or policy or treatment. Uh, what is the direct action we are asking for? A lot of students try to communicate about a need for change and they just talk about additional training. I know in the last year a lot of conversation has happened around the topic of police brutality and a lot of my students are focused on that particular issue. What individual policy are you suggesting? I think everyone would recognize both the police and the civilians would argue that they don't want to be in a situation where the police are physically violent against anybody. So instead of saying that we need more training, which is very, very broad, is there a specific type of training? Are we suggesting that perhaps conflict resolution training needs to be improved? Is there a particular type of policy that is being promoted? Are we talking about some form of social emotional learning training that could be provided for those officers by making specific choices about either a specific location, right? We could talk about the Long Beach Police Department and a specific type of training. When I bring together the location and the focus on a particular policy, once again, I'm creating the opportunity for the AP reader to give me those points. Uh, focusing in on individual industries or businesses can also be very, very helpful. It's not enough to just talk about the police or just talk about education. Uh, it's not even enough to just focus in on high school. High school covers an enormous amount of ground and so there's too much of an opportunity for the AP reader to not assign the points because it is entirely too broad. So within high school what are we looking at? We're looking at a particular subject. We're looking at math Algebra 1 and then perhaps a specific intervention within that particular venue. So talking about puzzle based learning. Narrow, specific, now I know what the entire paper will be focused on. So now let's take a look at this high scoring example where the st student would earn the points. Due to the fact 
that the failure to offer meaningful instruction and constructive activism in the high school level has more of a negative impact on Latino females. It is necessary to investigate the ways in which the curriculum in California high schools could be adjusted to provide instruction in productive strategies for advocacy. So yes, we're still talking about activism, but we're talking about how we're providing instruction in constructive activism in a high school level, particularly focusing on how it impacts Latino females in the curriculum for California high schools. Now, as an AP reader, if I were to read this statement, I would be able to say, okay, I clearly understand what the, uh, what the focus of this paper is going to be. And I know what the boundaries of the research are going to be. I know everything's going to be related to uh, the relationship between activism and meaningful instruction as it relates to Latino females in a high school in California. So this is narrow and defined. So when you're thinking about how to do this, as you're looking at your choices, ask yourself who, where, when, why? Why is this important? So as you start to make those choices, you might also want to ask yourself, what are some statistics that I could use to indicate why this is important? What kind of quantitative statistics could I use? What kind of qualitative statistics could I use? The AP readers will be looking for those. If I just say that there's a negative impact, but I don't provide some form of quantitative or qualitative statistics to support that claim, I might not be able to earn the points. Let's think about what kind of experts could provide that information. Am I talking about doctors, lawmakers, college professors, statisticians, uh, general researchers, specific types of scientists, who is it that could help to provide me with that information? So as I'm doing my search, or as I go back through an annotated bibliography on the subject, are there some people in there, some experts in there that provided the kind of information that would help me communicate to the AP reader what the focus and scope of my paper is going to be? The way we'll go about doing this is, uh, and for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, there is a link to this document in the bio for this uh, individual video. We're going to take a look at identifying our topic, our stakeholders, the region, and the so what or why for our particular paper. In the left-hand column, you're going to identify a summary just in your own words. Try to fill that information out. Uh, what is the topic? What are Who are the stakeholders? Where is this happening? And why would anybody care about this? In the middle column, you're going to try and identify some statistics that you can use to provide communication to the AP reader. And then once you have filled out those two columns, you're going to share this information with a peer. And you two will swap and look at each other's work. And based on what you see, provide some feedback as to how this work could be improved. So once again, the link to this particular pre-write activity will be located in the bio or description for this video. But remember, the goal here is to make some very specific choices so that we can clearly communicate the context of our problem. Who is impacted by it? Why is it important that they're impacted by it? How do I know that they are impacted by it? I hope this video helps you. Remember, you have to do this well in order to score the points. Binary choice rows require us to perform this uh, skill at a high level. So once again, take a look at this pre-write activity, work with a partner, and see if you can't give some feedback so that you can help improve each other's performance. Good luck.